Kyle, I hope you like Whitney Houston. We know how much Megan likes Whitney Houston. So me and the groomsmen got together and we decided, let's start a little surprise. So if you could all direct your attention over here, ladies and gentlemen, with Whitney Houston. I'm just kidding. That'd be crazy though, right? <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be pretty crazy. <laughs> I'm only going to do one little line. This is from Kyle to you. And I will always love you. I just think you guys like really exemplify what it means to put out the love of God to others. And it's because you understood the assignment. You accepted Christ and you went beyond that and understood that God loved me. Like the next thing to do is to give that love out to other people. And I think you guys as a couple do that greatly together. I think it's clear that God orchestrated this. He put you guys together. You are a faithful and committed friend, someone who always initiates time and wants to hear about my life. You are a refreshing friend in that you're honest and you're real about what's going on with you. You're someone who always wants everyone around you to feel included and to have fun. And you love to make memories um, and go on adventures. And you know, as an 80 year old woman inside the body of a 25 year old, I just really appreciate that in you. Most of my most fun memories are with you and because of you. While you possess all those qualities since I've first known you, it has been so cool to see these qualities grow as you've continued to say yes to God and persevere in following Him even when life has been really painful and difficult. Something that you know very well is that for us to be Christians, it doesn't mean that we're immune to suffering. And so I think a verse that really reminds me of you is in 1 Peter 5. And it says, humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you had suffered a little while, will himself restore you, and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. But you yourself had your fair share of suffering. And I think what's really unique about that is because you know God in a personal way, you didn't suffer alone, but also he has used your suffering tremendously to transform your character and make you into the woman that you are. And so Kyle, you have been an answer to our prayers. I think you came at the absolute perfect time in Megan's life. For the most part, I've had a great life. But the first time that I held my little girl, my arms, was uh, my life changed from great to amazing. Her, her walk with God is just amazing to me. I'm so proud that you stayed with God and uh, walked with God. She introduces me to Kyle. And I'll think, okay, I'm the dad. I gotta be objective here. I gotta, you know, find out what's going on. But I can't find anything wrong with this guy. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm still, still looking. There's not even anything coming close. You're an amazing young man. And I wanna thank um, uh, Rick and Kelly for raising such an amazing young man. Um, because it's just, uh, it's been way beyond what I could have thought for someone to be like you. How about that, Megan? What a beautiful bride. When I saw you come out, your dad walking you out, I just like, I got choked up. I had the privilege of watching you grow up from just a very, very little girl to the woman you are now, a woman after God's heart. You are truly your mother's daughter. You two have so much in common. You put your heart and soul into everything you do. And there's a humility in your excellence. When you do things well, you don't need to toot your horn. And I'm just so proud of you for that. Your mom and I are just so proud of you. When Kyle came along, I just knew right away that he would be a good fit for you. He's just so even keeled, even tempered. And I just the way you adore him is just obvious. And I could not be happier for you. And Kyle, I could not be happier for you either. You are getting a woman who will love you wholeheartedly. I'm just so proud of the both of you. I promise to keep God first in my life, followed second by you. I promise to be faithful to you and to hold you and you alone 
as my standard of beauty. I promise to watch at least one musical a year with you, <laughs> and maybe even two if I'm feeling generous. <laughs> I promise to have and to maintain friendships outside of our marriage, friends whose help and wisdom I can seek and rely on in order to be a more well-rounded, godly man and a better husband. I promise to have children with you, God willing, and to be a loving and caring father towards our future children. I promise to remember that Whitney Houston's birthday is August 9th, <laughs> and to celebrate it with you by listening to her music on that day. Finally, I promise to lead you as your husband towards unity between each other, growing in the knowledge of God, and continuing to center our relationship around God. Though I may not carry out all of these promises perfectly, it is by the grace of God that I can be faithful to the ways in which God has called me to love and serve you. I love you, Megan. I love you extra most bestest with extra pepperonis on top. <laughs> Kyle, with my mom's passing, you were always by my side and never thought twice about it. You have always been available when I needed you and initiated the emotions when I have felt numb at times and didn't run away from them. I can speak on behalf of my family and my mom that we are so grateful for you and so happy that you are the man I get to marry today. I promise to fight to put God at the center of our marriage even when things get hard. I promise to be faithful to you and only you. I promise to work through our issues and not let bitterness grow. I promise to only cheer for the Buckeyes and the Browns when it comes to football for the rest of my life. <laughs> and I promise to follow your lead with our life together. I love you so much. So now as the two of you become one, you get to build your house together stronger on that one foundation. Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a, a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain fell, the floods came, the wind blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. There will be storms in life. Some blow in from places unknown and some arise from within. But as you remain true to Christ, you will remain true to each other and your house will stand on the rock. When each of you decided to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he became the foundation of your lives. We may think we can build a firm foundation on our own wisdom, our own effort, our own goodness, our own good works, but we cannot. For as Paul wrote, no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And when each of you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and entrust your soul to his sacrificial death and resurrection, you planted yourselves firmly on the one sure foundation. There is no other. There is no other.